The goals of this homework are to understand the importance of DNA polarity in transcription, to distinguish genes from transcripts, and to observe introns and exons using a genome browser and dot matrix plots. DNA is double-stranded, and we're going to call one strand Watson and one Crick. The double-stranded helix is comprised of nucleotides arranged along a deoxyribose sugar backbone. DNA is transcribed into RNA molecules called transcripts. RNA is also comprised of nucleotides, but this time they're arranged on a ribose sugar backbone. RNA can be reverse transcribed to complementary DNA, or cDNA. RNA transcripts are translated into proteins that are chains of amino acids. Detergent enzymes are proteins with catalytic activity that break down organic acids. Now let's go to the homework. Assignment 2 starts out with an exercise designed to help you understand how a double-stranded DNA can be transcribed in two directions. You can work on question number one on your own. It's not that difficult and you don't really even need to turn in your answer. But you do need to turn in your answers for the rest of the questions. This is the same table you worked on last week with some new rows added and it's been rearranged a little bit. Uh, you're going to start off this assignment in the gene view of NCBI. The genomic context section shows the orientation of the gene we're looking at, as well as a few flanking genes. You can get this same information from the genome browser if you scroll out. The orientation arrows are related to which strand of DNA is transcribed. Assume the transcripts pointing towards the right are encoded by the Watson strand. Complete the rows in the table showing what strand encodes the rest of the genes. Now let's find some real sequences. Scroll down to the NCBI reference seek section, and in the section called genomic, click on the GenBank. GenBank is a format that gives you lots of information about a gene, including the references, some annotations or description of what the gene's about, and the sequences. You can cut and paste these sequences, but the numbers to the left of each line cause problems with bioinformatics programs that expect a nucleotide sequence to be comprised of A, T, C, or G and not numbers. The FASTA formatted sequence has no numbers and is useful for bioinformatics studies. To get to the FASTA, scroll up to the FASTA and click. The FASTA file is comprised of the sequences and a descriptor at the top which is started by a greater than sign. Now another way to have gotten these sequences is we could have just clicked on the FASTA in the first place. FASTA formatted files are really useful because they can be used in lots of different types of bioinformatic programs. The one we're going to use is called Sequence Manipulation Suite. The Sequence Manipulation Suite is a collection of JavaScript programs that for analyzing short DNA and protein sequences. At the top, you'll see lots of conversion utilities, for example, being able to translate a GenBank sequence into a FASTA. We're going to use the Sequence Analysis programs, and in particular for this exercise, we're going to use DNA stats. Now go back to the FASTA file, copy this, and pindo. This program tells you the percentage of each nucleotide in the DNA. Because GC bonds are tighter than AT bonds, molecules with higher GC content have higher denaturation temperatures. Knowing the percentage of GC pairs is important in many areas of molecular biology, including gene synthesis and sequencing. So you, what you want to do is enter the GC frequency for each gene into the table. An important difference between bacterial and eukaryotic RNAs is that eukaryotic RNAs are significantly processed before they're translated, while bacterial RNAs aren't. In particular, eukaryotic genes often have non-coding introns that are removed from the RNAs before they're translated. Bacterial genes typically have no introns. One interesting way to visualize introns is using a dot matrix view. In a dot matrix plot, one DNA sequence is written along the x-coordinate and one is written along the y-coordinate. In this example, I'm going to represent a specific DNA sequence just with a number. Let's say each of these numbers represents maybe mm, five nucleotides. Wherever the gene and the RNA are identical, the algorithm draws a line. And if the two sequences are identical and there are no introns, the plot is a straight diagonal. 
Now let's try this with an intron. Let's say the intron sequence is sequence 5, 6, and 7. And this is present in the gene, but not in the RNA sequence. Now the algorithm can match up sequences 1, 2, 3, and 4, but there's no match for 5 and 6. The next match isn't until 8, 9, and 10. So the resultant plot is a line with a little jog in it, which represents where the intron is. And this kind of analysis is very useful for comparing structural differences between genes and is very often integrated into genomics packages. So now let's try this out for real at NCBI. We're going to use a popular algorithm for doing the gene alignments, and this is called BLAST, Basic Local Alignment Sequence Tool. There's many flavors of BLAST, and we're going to use a specialized version of BLAST-N, and this is called an Align to Sequence in using BLAST. For input, you give the program two FASTA formatted sequences. In this case, let's use the APR gene, and we'll put the same sequence in both boxes. Hit BLAST. Now BLAST is going to compare them, and it'll give a similarity score that depends on how similar those sequences are. The color of the line shows the degree of similarity in the two sequences, and because these are exactly the same, the similarity has the highest possible score, which is shown in red. Now let's visualize this in the dot matrix view. Gene sequences are along the bottom, RNA is along the side, and a diagonal line draws between because of the identity. So now let's see what happens if there's a random insertion or an intron in one of these copies. Randomness is surprisingly difficult to achieve, but you can get a random sequence from SMS. Take this random sequence and put it right in the middle of the top sequence. This is essentially an intron because it's present in the gene, which is the top sequences, but not in the RNA, which is at the bottom. Now, when you compare these by BLAST, you'll see a discontinuity that marks the intron where the line marks the exons. Use this two-way BLAST to compare the genes and transcripts for each of the four enzymes. Save the picture as a PNG file and submit it with your other assignment sheets. Use the information from the graph to complete the cells about the number of exons. And that's it. That's all for this week.